Day 11. It's about 9.45 in the morning. We're 140 miles south of Beaufort, Cape Lookout. We're about to enter the Gulf Stream, start our crossing. Winds are about 20 knots out of the south-southwest. Remnants of Bonnie are over towards Wilmington and Frying Pan Shoals, Cape Fear, but I don't think it's much to be concerned about. We struck the main last night and have just the uh, staysail up, trying to slow the boat down to time it for a, to ensure I have a daylight arrival and uh, Beaufort Cape Lookout. I don't want to go in there at night in the dark. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of boost we'll get from the Gulf Stream. So I've got her running about five knots right now with just the staysail up. It's very comfortable. I swapped out and put the High wind blade on the Cape Horn is an experiment and seems to be working pretty well. Beautiful day. Cumulus clouds on the horizon. There's thunderheads up forward. And I think we're going to run into some squalls at some point. stretch all the way across our bow from port to starboard. I saw a fair amount of lightning out there last night, but it always seemed to be just in front of us. All in all, beautiful uh, ocean sail. Just getting into the Gulf Stream. That's not looking good. For some reason, the audio is poor for the next minute, so I'll narrate. We're just entering the Gulf Stream. The waves are confused and pretty large for the amount of wind we have. Only about 20 knots. But the boat's just walling around, only making about 3.5 knots with just a staysail. So I decided to raise a double reef main, and now we're making about 6 knots. It's not a simple event to raise the mainsail because the boat's rolling so hard in the confused waves it makes it difficult to work on deck. There are also squalls coming down from behind, and I wanted to be able to drop the main if necessary. But at the same time, I wanted to keep the boat moving and get across the Gulf Stream. Our last night at sea, we encountered a series of intense electrical storms. I don't get scared easily, but I am not a fan of lightning on a sailboat. I took the Garmin and the Spot and my small HF receiver and put them in a stainless steel oven to protect them. I sat on the cabin sole while the storm passed right over the top of us. You know the kind, where the flash and the bang are simultaneous. But fortune smiled on the far reach, and she sailed right through it, and we escaped without difficulty.
The single-handed voyage home was a powerful experience for me. I gained confidence and improved my single-handed sailing skills. I felt the solitude, time for self-reflection, and challenging sailing was good for my soul. I was thrilled with the far reach and felt our many modifications and the long hard work to rebuild her had paid off handsomely. And best of all, I couldn't wait to get back out there. Join us for Season 3, where we make several enhancements to improve the far reach even more, refining her four-stay quick-release system, replacing primary and secondary sheet winches, adding taller stanchions, building new door raid boxes, adding a few LED interior lights, and building a simple but more capable external antenna for her HF receiver. The far reach also miraculously survives Hurricane Florence without a scratch, when many other less fortunate boats in the marina are sunk or severely damaged. And finally, we head back to the West Indies with another single-handed offshore voyage. We run downwind in a gale for the first time, but otherwise have a fast passage arriving in the British Virgin Islands in 12 days. There's going to be some great sailing and plenty of adventure too, along with lots of time for simple living on an uncomplicated but very capable sailing machine. If you love sailing, I think you're going to enjoy Season 3. If you enjoyed this episode of Far Reach Voyages, let us know in the comments. Also, consider liking and subscribing, as it tells us you would like to see more videos, and it helps the channel grow. See you next episode.